hey and thank you for clicking play literally just got off the plane well not literally but very recently an hour and a half ago i got home from the airport an hour before that the plane landed at perth airport after my uk trip so i just really wanted to just get a pickups video out of the way so that i can tidy all the stuff <laughs> that i've brought back just want to say i had an excellent time there will be some other videos coming out of my trip such as i went to the rmc cave obviously went to kickstart the amiga event which was fantastic uh, met some fantastic people there um and just general holiday stuff obviously it was a holiday it wasn't about this um but where stuff is relevant then obviously i'll share that with you in various various different ways i'm not going to bore you with the details of my entire holiday um let's do it let's just get into it um so starting with yeah so this this is something that i actually bought on ebay um last year um and it was sitting at my mate lee's house um and in the uk and I forgot to pick it up. Well, he forgot to bring it to me in a pub and I forgot he was even coming to the pub to bring it to me because we just got chatting and drinking and it didn't actually matter. So it had to wait until my next trip, which was the one just gone. And that is PC Zone. And the reason why I wanted this copy of PC Zone is because this is, and it's got the cover disc, which I'm really excited about as well. I believe there's some Quake tools on this um, that I used to use, not too sure. But what I do definitely know is because I've mentioned it before and I probably won't be able to find it off the cuff now. Um, no, I'll use too much time looking for it. But basically, there is a letter in here from me that got published in PC Zone. Um, so I'm very pleased about that. Um, and now I, I think it's near the back. I'm not going to be able to find it now, am I? Um, or it's either near the back or near the front or somewhere in the middle. Anyway, it's in there. And it was a bit about the Duke Nukem level that I used to play at work. And I won um, letter of the month where, by writing that letter in. So, no, can't, <laughs> can't find it. Anyway, it's in there. It's in this issue. Um, so, yeah, very pleased with that. We'll put that there. It may get ditched off the shelf. Oh, no, we'll stand it up like that. And then other stuff will probably take over. It's gonna fall. It's not gonna work. No, it's going on the floor. All right, we'll leave. We'll leave that up to represent that PC Zone magazine. How's that? All right. Okay. Um, other stuff that I had sent to my mate Lee's. Oh, everything I had sent to my mate Lee. I must say, Lee, thank you so much for letting me use your address. Um, to dump things and fill your wardrobe with things. Okay, yeah. This is probably the next thing that got sent to Lee's, actually. And there's a bit of a sad story now. <laughs> so, I purchased on eBay a Trojan Light Phaser boxed with the discs that come with this and the manual, I believe, as well. And it also came with the Enforcer. And it was reported as working, uh, but with a bit of a sticky trigger, which most of them do suffer. Sadly, I wasn't sure how to bring this back because suddenly it was like, hang on, it's gun-shaped and I'm bringing it back on a plane. How do you do that? Well, let me show you something. The gun's no longer in there. I got the manual and I got the disc, so I'm still very happy. But at Heathrow Airport, I thought, after reading horror stories of people being pulled off flights and missing their flight because they pulled them off so that they could go through their checked-in baggage because they saw something of interest, I thought I'd rather take it as carry-on and present it to security. They were very happy I did that and then very happy, not so happy. They were actually very nice about it. But of course, they can't let me on a flight with something that represents a gun, even if any normal person can tell it's a toy. Um, so sadly, the actual gun itself has been destroyed by, by Heathrow Airport security. I don't blame them. I blame myself. I should have posted it to myself. I should have paid for international shipping. Anyway, the guns without the box actually come up quite regularly, so I'm not too panicked. I will get one. Um, but yeah, for now, what I do have is the box and the discs. So I'm actually very happy with that, but not at the price I paid, because I paid for a gun. Anyway, lesson learned. If you're buying these internationally, any light gun, just have eBay shipper ship it to you. Don't take it on a plane. Um, right, what's next? I think what is next is more stuff that was waiting at Lee's. 
So I bought some stuff because knowing I was coming over. Um, Dark Side for the Spectrum. I bought this off somebody. I do have a list of names here. Dark Side. Johnny was the seller that sold me this, um, and I'm very happy with it as well. All complete in there um, with the poster and the tape as well in there as well. I don't know if there was also a manual back in the day, but do you know what? I don't really care. That's as complete as I need it. Um, so very happy with that. That's good. Where's that going to go? It's going to go there. Stand up. And... Okay, some more stuff from Spectrum Groups. Okay. I can't remember if this was from the Spectrum Group. It was, again, waiting at least. Unless I tell you otherwise, all this stuff was waiting at least. Um, no, there's either a Spectrum Group or a result of a Discord wanted post that I put up, but these were donated by... No, not that guy. Hang on. I've got to scroll up. by a guy called Joe. And he knew I was after Spitfire 40, and he said, mate, I've also got Ace and Ace 2. And he very kindly sent me all them. He said, I'm not gonna use them, I'd rather you have them, knowing that you'll use them, and that you'll appreciate them. So Spitfire 40 was the one I've, I was after, but I've also got Ace and Ace 2. Very heavy they feel as well, so they seem to be complete. Stuff's gonna get moved around here. Um, other stuff that was waiting at least. I said I wouldn't say that again, didn't I? Um, so Thunderblade, I bought this off the Spectrum Group and the seller was Thunderblade, Richard. So Richard, thank you very much for Thunderblade. Looks like a very good copy for the Spectrum, this is. Now I had the plus three version of Thunderblade and also the next game I'm gonna show you, um, but I'm I just want the shelf piece now, really, and I'll play it. I'm happy to play it off tape, or I'll I'll burn a disc if I work out how to do that for my plus three, um, because the plus three games they go for stupid money. So for me, I get the nostalgia looking at that cover, and I can still play the game. I'm I'm not gonna go chasing plus three discs. So the next one that that goes to, and these were from a guy called John on the Sinclair for Sale group. And so Road Blasters is in the same bucket as that. So Road Blasters, I originally had on plus three disc. And I'm just looking at where my camera is choosing to focus. It looks like it's trying to focus. I don't know what it's trying to focus on. It's not this. Anyway. It's not, I couldn't get it in product mode, mate. Focus cancellation, spot focus, whatever. Anyway, it's that. Road Blasters, again, not going to chase the plus three discs. The tapes are good enough for me. And along with though that, I also bought off him Game Over. Now, obviously, I want the um, the un uncensored cover art. This one's got the um, the screenshot in the wrong place, but I saw it, it wasn't a bad price for it. Stuff it, I'll have that one for now and hopefully upgrade in the future to the one that I would really like. And this one, Target Renegade. <laughs> no adjustments needed, absolutely. Love Target Renegade. So there we go. Fantastic little collection of Spectrum games coming along there. Um, what's next? So much stuff is on my floor. PC Zone I've done. Okay, so one of the first things I did, apart from, you know, getting all this stuff from Lee's house, when I went over there was I went to Kickstart. Okay, after having COVID, by the way. Um, I think it was COVID. Um... Oh no, before Kickstart, before Kickstart, we went to Wales and we met. So we met a YouTuber, but not in our community. My wife's into crafting um, and one of her favourite YouTubers is a lady called Ruth, who does a lot of stuff and she's based in Wales. So we went to visit Ruth um, and it was quite amazing because we was expecting to like catch up with her for a bit, maybe have a coffee. That would be that. We we had the other things we could quite happily entertain ourselves within Wales. No, 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 no. We were instantly family. It was fantastic. We had dinner at their place. Um, 
went around Powys Castle, all that kind of stuff. Really appreciate it. I got to know her husband, Tom, and so that's why I'm bringing it into context of this. So we'll put a, if your wife's into craft, do check out the links in the description because I'll put a link to Ruth's channel in the chat, in the, in the description, simply because in the context of what I'm going to show you now. But her husband, Tom, is into collecting comics. So OG Duffy, I know you're into collecting comics. So what Tom very kindly gave me, because I got talking about the only comics that I bought back in the day were Transformers and Action Force. So he very kindly gave me these reissues. And I'd remember seeing these. They're not really reissues. They're like a, a homage to both franchises in one comic. So it's called Brit Formers and it's Action Force and Transformers rolled into one, which is amazing. Um, so you got that one there and he also gave me this one here as well. And I remember seeing these come out and thinking, oh, if I'd have known about that, I'd have jumped on that bandwagon. Um, just cause yeah, two nostalgia hits in, in one go. And so that's awesome. So issue two and issue three. And he also, cause we were talking about um, church comics which is a, a very niche thing he gave me this one the hiding place so some interesting reading there as well so that's really cool again i doubt they're going to stand up let's put the brit brit formers at the front there actually maybe they'll stand up against the phaser box so tom i really do appreciate those because because that's just awesome and now I'll show you this next one. Now we went to Somerset after that and I'm blaming this on Tom because I went into a comic book shop and I bought another comic that I do remember reading. I said, have you got any Aliens vs Predator? And the guy said, oh, I've got like a 12 issue set of one of the stories complete. <laughs> so... <laughs> I kind, of, I kind of walked away with that. So I'm now a comic book collector, but I'm really excited. I'm hoping there's a piece of artwork in here that was very specific to me because I, I copied it in MS Paint of all things and it actually came out quite well back in the day. So if it is in one of these issues, this specific piece of artwork, I'm gonna redo that um, as part of trying to use my systems to be more creative. And I'll use the 386 just like I did back in the day, to do that. So that comic book shop was, it's in Bath, and I don't know what his actual name is. Cool Things Cool, no, that's not it. He's got that many, have a look at his flyer, right? It's it's this guy. <laughs> that's who it is, and if I'll find some links, and I'll put them in the description as well. Not sponsored by him, um, but he, he did give me a very good price. I hadn't mentioned the fact that I do YouTube or anything, um, and, and um, he did give me a very good price regardless. And... I mentioned in passing to him that a lot of comic book shops are now doing retro games as well. And he said, oh, look in the cabinet in the corner. Let me move some junk out of the way, which he did. And guess what? He had some um, some um, Amiga games from the 10 Star Games Pack and, and a few other trinkets in there as well. Nothing I needed. And I was spending enough money on those. Even I did get a good prize. I thought I'll leave it, keep the wife happy. But yeah, so that was cool. Uh, what else we got down here? Right. Moving on to, did I say Kickstart? I've been to Kickstart. What did I mention from Kickstart? No, I was going to do, and then I didn't, and then we did. Kickstart, we'll go to Kickstart. So at Kickstart, it was great to meet all the guys. Obviously, there will be a separate video about that. A couple of things I picked up. This copy is actually for another mate of mine because I should have my copy coming to the store in Australia anyway. But Amiga Addict, issue 30. Um, Kickstarter was fantastic. Um, and of course, I picked this one up because oh, he's so full of himself. But guess what? Um, yes, I do, of course, have an article in that issue there. So that'll be going to one of my mates over here. Um, assuming. Oh! That was Domino's. That was Domino's. I'm going to move things aside now because this is all going to get broken. Let's just put that. That was a perfect Domino's there. Target Renegades on the floor. Never do a video straight off a plane. It's a stupid idea. Right, let's put all those neatly like that. Right. And we'll do that. Now, why did I do Wales before Kickstart? I don't know. 
why I did Wales before kickstart. But anyway, magazine you saw there. Now, what also happened at kickstart was a fantastic bloke came over. He says, just to see me, he said, I probably wouldn't have gone to this, mate, but I wanted to catch up with you. And so if you haven't already seen the video by George Tui, Tui's Tech and Gaming, I'll put a link in the description, of course. We met up and it was like we'd known each other for all our lives. It was it was crazy. And he gifted me, actually I gifted him a copy of that magazine with all of the signatures. Um, uh, the, the contributors to Amiga Addict very kindly signed it. Um, so he got that copy and he gifted me a zipstick, which is my favourite zipstick. And this allowed myself and my nephew to play games on my nephew's original A500. We got that working while I was over there. So couldn't have done it without this zipstick, George. And I really do appreciate that. That's going to be my main Amiga gaming stick, just like it was back in the day. Everything else will go by the wayside now. What I also picked up at Kickstarter. Oh, so people in the community are so crazy. One of the first guys, and I mean that in a good way, one of the first guys that came up to me at Kickstart, and again when I was at the RMC Cave, was um, Paul, uh, aka Pajaco6502, um, big contributor to the um, This Week in Retro uh, community. And he knew I was after a couple of lemmings, and so he came up and gave me this mint copy of lemmings and wouldn't take any money for it at all. It's absolutely mint. And he... The reason why I was after a copy of Lemmings is because um, Mike Daly had kindly offered to sign my copy of Lemmings, which was awkward because I didn't have one. Um, but Mike Daly being one of the key developers from DMA Designs and also went on to do GTA and all that, and he tells a story. There's lots of podcasts out there where he's been interviewed and he will happily tell you the story. Um, I'll put a link in the description to the one from, um, from Kickstart by Boat, John. Um, and you'll know John, you know, in America, um, because you'll get the whole interview and the whole thing there um, as well. But really appreciate both Paul giving me this mint copy and also Mike for taking the time to not only sign it, but then also coming up to me later and we, we had a good chat as well. So it, it was it's amazing to be rubbing shoulders. When I, when I do a video about Kickstart, uh, there'll be more about that kind of stuff. Great event, absolutely fantastic event. While I was also there, I was part of the Kickstart package. I won't flip it round, but we all got this lanyard, and that has a code on the side I'm not showing you for a free copy of um, Amiga Forever. Obviously, I already use Amiga Forever, but it was great that they were doing that, so I like that. Also, Hoffman was there, DJ Hoffman, and he um, had held back a copy of his game, uh, Sessanoid. I think that's how you pronounce it. <laughs> Sessanoid, so a brand new game. And the reason why I wanted this was because I'm keen to play Amiga 32 games directly from disc, but new ones, because I didn't have nostalgia for the system. So it makes sense to do new ones um, rather than chasing old ones I did I never played. Um, and he signed it. You can, you can just about see he signed it across the top there. But also I said, and this is an in-joke, if you're in the This Week in that Retro crowd, especially in the Discord channel, then you'll know my battery's about to run out. So I'm gonna, after this bit, I'm going to pause and then there'll be a cut. But I got him to sign, and this is just a wind-up day from this week in retro, also available in stereo. That's on the inside there. There's going to be a cut here. I might tidy this desk. Oh, we've not got too much to go. All right, <laughs> I'll be back. Okay. It's all out of order. <laughs> it's all so very out of order. I showed you Sessanoid. Why is that on the floor? Why is Cessanoid on the floor? Was that what I was just showing you? Must have been. Right, let's back up there. So yes, Kickstart was good. Um, okay, back in time again then. Um, because when we were traipsed around Somerset, told you it was all out of order, um, I went into a couple of shops and... Which one did I discover first? Oh, yeah. So it was a comic book shop, large comic book shop in Glastonbury. And I found this. Don't worry about the price that's there because that's not what I got it for. Lovely guy. Um, and I will do a bit of a video about the um, the shops that I found and found stuff in. And I have taken some snippets. That'll be a separate video. Um, and then in Wells, which is near Glastonbury in Somerset, I found um, this. 
and it was nice popping into this shop. So this was in an actual retro game shop, and I wasn't, I'd, I'd forgotten to even look for them, and so we just, it was nice to just stumble across some shops. I didn't look them up on Google or anything like that. These two, um, the one in Bath I did, um, the comic book shop, but these two were just sort of stumbled upon. So Saboteur 2 for the Spectrum, Star Wars, oh sorry, that's also Star Wars, that's Star Wars for the Spectrum, Saboteur 2, which I don't have, never even played it, for the Spectrum, and the guy in this shop had a bit of a nice story to tell about Clive Townsend himself, so I'll share that when we do that video. Um, okay, again, another thing that was waiting for me at Lee's house, so back to things at Lee's house, temporarily. Um, and I should have mentioned this at the beginning, but this, this was actually bought off OG Duffy on because uh, he runs an eBay store as well. Um, and when he offloads some stuff, and Low Wolf Adventure Books, I remember doing these at school, funnily enough, in English class. So, you, where you read and then you have to make a decision, it tells you what page to go to, and you soon learn that one of the death pages is used over and over again. So, you stop turning to anything, taking any choices that say turn to that page. Other than that, Really cool books. Look at the map there, and this is a nice hardback of books one and two. So very pre pleased, and that's been good condition. Thank you, OG, as well for selling me that. That went to Lee's house. Um, right, so more stuff from game shops as we plod plodded around, um, and those two I'll come back to. So we came across a shop. I can't remember where we were, and I can't remember what the shop was called. So that's a bit of a problem, but I'll rectify that when we do the video about shops I went to. Yeah. Um, but it was another shop that branched out into doing um, retro games, and their prices were very reasonable. It's not... See, it says GameStar on here, but that's not who it was. Anyway... There's a, there's a road in the Midlands called Snake Pass. It's meant to be the most dangerous road in the UK. So, of course, I took the hire car down there. And it was at the town at the bottom end of Snake Pass. That's So, if anybody knows the area I'm talking about, that's where these came from. Anyway, great shop on the high street. Picked up for the PlayStation 2, Spy Hunter, for 99p. <laughs> Unbelievable. Also, let me put that put that somewhere where it's going to fall over obviously from the same shop these are all from the same shop spy hunter 2 for the playstation 2 for 99p crazy prices and so these are the modern renditions of spy hunter modern in terms of playstation 2 um and then time splitters 2 which does have the manual so this was 5.99 but time splitters 2 i've got number one this is number two. All from the same shop, so that was good. I quite like that. So, CEXs, there's going to be, would have been a cut there because my son just came in. <laughs> Didn't realise I was filming uh, on day one of being back in the country. Uh, but, yeah, CEXs, uh, we went to CEXs all over the country. If there was a CEX in the town, I went to it. Um, Apart from Maidstone, didn't make it into the Maidstone one. Anyway, um, and of course you can't criticise them for not having the game you're looking for or games you're looking for, but they do vary, you know. Some aren't very neat or well kept and stuff is in all kinds of weird places and not in the right order, not in the right sections. It's not just the staff's fault. Obviously, you know, the um, the clients, the, the customers are to, uh, to, to blame for moving stuff around, but you've got to staff for that, right? So out of all the stores, and they didn't have anything I wanted, but it was just so nicely kept. I would have wore Chesterfield. So Chesterfield, lovely little town. Wonderful markets there as well. You'll get lots of game pickups there as well. But um, yeah, Chesterfield CEX. Um, and I spoke to the staff about it. I said, look, I've been all over the country, and so far your, star, your store is the best that I've been in in terms of well-presented, everything neatly stocked. It's in alphabetical order. And even when myself and Nikki were, Nikki was saying, oh, what games were you looking for? And I'm saying this, that, and the other. The girl that was currently making sure the shelves were neat and tidy, she was scanning the shelves for the games we were talking about. I saw her do it. That's fantastic. That's how to run a store. 
brilliant. Anyway, I can't remember where this first one came from, but it's SSX for the PlayStation 2. This is my wife's favorite snowboarding game from when we had our PS2 originally. So very pleased to have that again. Um, and that was only £2.50 apparently. So that's not too bad. The second one, I can't remember what store that one was from, by the way, as I said. The second one is SSX Tricky. Now, we had this on the Xbox once we moved to Australia, but I don't have an Xbox. I've got a PS2, so what the hell. Um, and again, my wife enjoyed it. Always preferred the original, always wanted the original again. But SSX Tricky, we came to know and love. This one was £12 in Tunbridge Wells CEX, which was probably a bit steep, but I took it anyway. So there you go. No manual. What was I thinking? Why did I? I don't know. Because I just wanted to get tricky as well. Look at that. So I've just found something else. So SSX, the one that cost me in a different store, £2.50, has a disc and the manual. The disc is platinum. Ah, that's possibly why. Because that's not a platinum thing, is it? What colour are the platinum? They're silver, aren't they? I don't know. I don't know how it works on the PlayStation 2, but that is a platinum disc, but it's got the manual. This, by the way, was my wristband from uh, Kickstart, which I kept on until it literally fell off. Like That was on for at least a month, because Kickstart was so awesome. Um, but yeah, so a bit weird. Is this one a platinum one as well? No. It's not. So maybe that one was why it was cheap, because it's, is it the wrong disc for that box? I don't care as long as it works, to be honest. I actually don't care, but maybe that's what, so I'll give them that. I'll give them that, that's fine. Right, um, then, oh, okay. We're getting through it now. We're nearly there. One of my best mates, Nick, I won't tell you why, but basically he was clearing out some stuff for a family member and, um, yeah, long story short, he gave me a PSP. Needs a new battery because the battery won't charge. A PSP, but it does work. It's not the board then. Um, and it works and it charges, uh, as in, sorry, it just gives the flashing orange light, but it works with the power plugged in. You can play it. So I've got a PSP now, which I'm really happy about. And I had the choice of two that he had. And I got uh, Shinobi. There was actually six games I could have grabbed, and I said, no, I'm not going to be greedy. I'm not going to grab two PSPs and six games. I'll grab one PSP. I'll make sure the other one works for you, tell you what it's worth, and I'll only grab the games I think I'm going to play. I grabbed I grabbed a soccer game, because why not? <laughs> World Tour Soccer. And Tiger Woods, PGA Golf. Because I think, I think now that we're getting older, I did play some actual... I played a lot of crazy golf while I was away. I played some actual golf. I'm rubbish at it, but I think as I'm getting older... I think that's what you'd use a PSP for, is practicing your swing, your golf swing. So I think I think that's what you'd do with a PSP at our age. Which actually, yeah, the person that owned these originally um, was not a young'un. So there you go. Oh, they're going there. I don't know why. Right, we're getting through it. Also went to Cleethorpes on the arcades, went to a few arcades. Um, <laughs> it's retro related, okay? Um, oh, this particular arcade, I think I took some footage of it. I'll put it in the, in the other thing of the shops. But anyway, um, they had the big Space Invader with the LED, bright, horrible game with the guns that look like... I don't know, water cannons, whatever, and you have to win tickets. And I, I, all I wanted to do was win enough tickets for a small glider, you know, the po polystyrene gliders that you, you push together and then you throw them and they last once and then that's it. But that was fun as a kid. I loved it. So it was a bit of nostalgia for me. So much nostalgia in this trip, by the way, um, as will be revealed in, as the videos dribble through over the coming weeks. But long story short, I didn't win enough tickets. I just found them around the place. People were giving them to me. And when we got to the place where you click the thing, she said, oh, um, I've actually got enough credits on the machine um, because that school group didn't have time to get all their um, prizes. Do you want the bigger glider? So I've got a big foam glider to make. So there you go. There's uh, yeah, memory lane, putting together these gliders, throwing them around the place. So there we go. That was from Cleethorpes. 
went to the big fish and chip shop there best fish and chip shop in britain apparently and i wouldn't disagree um yeah great service and you're on a, it's a nice setting for it um on the pier okay i also went uh before we get to that a few little personal trinkets look i have two of my school reports so that may or may not be an up and coming video <laughs> trip down memory lane that we might not want to go through together maybe i'll read that personally myself and see if that's stuff i want to be publicly known um okay we are pretty much there nearly two last ebay pickups that were sent to my mate lee's house and they're both a bit of a sad story, really. I'll do... Yeah, that's the first one I bought, so I'll do that one first. First one is this. Not many people, when I mention it, have heard of this game, but Space Gun. So Space Gun was originally an arcade cab, Operation Wolf style, you know, as in light gun shooter. Okay. I had it on the Amiga. I never played the arcade. I had it on the Amiga, and it's a blinder of a shooter. You can play it with mouse, but it's also one of the few games compatible with the Trojan light phaser. So you can see why I was really pleased to get hold of a copy of this, knowing that I also had, you know, to bring back a Trojan light phaser. So, bittersweet, I've got my favorite game ever for the Trojan light phaser, and the games that the Trojan light phaser cut originally came with. I currently don't have a Trojan light phaser. So that, my friends, is a priority number one of, of getting one. And you can see why. You are going to fall over and knock everything down. Nope, you're going to hold. The next one, and there's a bit of a theme here. Keep it in mind. Keep it in mind. We got so we got Space Gun, and we've got Alien vs Predator comics. There's a bit of a theme because I also finally snagged on eBay Alien vs Predator for the Jag. And why is this one a bit sad? Well, I'll, I'll tell you why it's a little bit sad. It's not sad, but. It's not the best box, and I knew, this is a non-eBay seller, I knew he'd posted good pictures, good description, I could see what condition it was in. Okay, now this was posted for £90, I got it, I put it off a cheeky offer in, um, and I got it for £60. Now, am I happy to pay £60 for a game in this condition? Not usually. The problem with this game for the Atari Jaguar is... It's gone stupid money, and I, I can't I can't fathom why, to be honest. It's a nice game. Oh, and it doesn't have the overlays, obviously. There's, yeah, there's no way the overlays will be there at that price. Um, so, for example, a possibly new old stock or possibly resealed, couldn't get a straight answer out of the seller, um, uh, example of this. And it did, look, obviously, in very good condition, from what you could see through the plastic seal. Um and you have to assume what, that all the overlays are in there and everything. That went after bidding. I My highest bid on that was just over £115. It went for £225. I'm not sad that I missed out on that. Because even to be honest, £115, that's getting up there. Why am I paying that kind of money for an old game? I don't get it. I just want to relive the memories of playing it. So I went for a lesser condition. Most of the ones that I saw without overlays were going for £90. This one I got for £60, um, also without overlays. And a, not in bad condition, but not in fantastic condition. And that's really what I've done is just settle for that. Um, so I'm pleased I've got it. That's not going to stand up, so I'm just going to lie that down here somewhere. Um, I'm pleased I've got it, but there is a bit of an AVP theme to some of those pickups, which is nice. Um, yeah, because, sorry, Space Gun is very alien-esque. It's, it's basically aliens without the franchise, without the license. Um, so that's why I'm saying that in, in context of that. So, um, lastly, I went to RMC The Cave and also the Arcade Archive. I've had a fantastic time. And to say thank you to my mate Lee for letting me use him as a postal address in the UK. I actually took him with me. Um, and we had a hotel for the evening, separate beds, <laughs> all right? We're just mates, um, went to school together. Um, and I, 
So I left Nicky in Tunbridge Wells. Me and Lee had a good weekend. Oh, I met so many good people there. Pajaco was there again as well. And I'm going to forget people's names, but I got greeted by Holly. Obviously, she works at the cave, um, taken around, showing behind the scenes stuff as well, which really appreciated. Went back after dark because we wanted to buy some stuff from the shop, which I'm about to show you. Oh, which includes this T-shirt. <laughs> there you go. And Lee got one in the Commodore 64 style. So we're both very happy with those. Um, also met uh, Dan, the sticker man. Um, and oh, the guy that runs the... Oh, I forgot his name again. Um, that runs the, um, the dev den that they've just set up. Anyway, if you haven't been to the cave in Stroud and the arcade archive, you have to. There will be a separate video about that. Um, but yeah, the other thing I picked up, and I meant to pick this up, in, oh no, first of all, some of the guys there, they gave me a present. Holly gave me a present of two and a half litres of a nice scrumpy. Um, and I didn't think I would have time to drink it because it was the last week I was in the UK. And it's all gone. <laughs> so thanks, Holly. And then also, oh, I've got a sock in there to keep it rigid. Um, so it didn't break in transit. But I got gifted by the staff there. This. This week in retro mug. With our mugs on it so from when i was part of the this week in retro podcast um so there we go i've got a mug with my digital avatar on and obviously neil dave and producer duncan so thank you guys so much for that that is that is fantastic to have that's going to sit unused on the shelf along with all the other mugs no i will i will drink some stuff out of that um and i picked up from the gift shop Hoffman's vinyl so he does um, music mixes of Amiga music and all of that kind of stuff and game music and so I wanted to get a, a copy of this while I was at Kickstarter because obviously I got the game from him um, but at the end of Saturday when I wanted to him to get a signed copy of this I couldn't find the guy so I thought that's okay because I'll get one from the cave so thank you Neil and especially Holly um, for taking us back to the cave after dark there's a separate video about that as well coming up. <laughs> Might save that one for Halloween, to be honest. Um, yeah, the cave has some mysteries. Um, but it was great to be able to get this. And this was the last sealed copy they had in the shop. So very pleased to have that. It's not going to stay sealed. That is going to get unsealed and played on my record player in the other room. Very happy. All right, that I think is it, except one last thing. And you'll think, why are you including that, Chris? Oh, just to end the nostalgia trip, I also picked up this. This is a set of coat pegs, and it's from what was my parents' house, which has now been sold. And the reason why this is the only thing I wanted from the house is because I don't know if you can see here, but there's a bit of a, a different coloration to where it's been restained. There was a puffy, those old 80s puffy stickers, digital sticker. Uh, uh, sorry, a, a puffy sticker here of a BMX and a stack of tyres. BMX rider and a crash helmet and everything. And that was stuck there because this was my peg when we moved into that house in England, in Tunbridge Wells in England, in 1982. So it was always home, even though I obviously moved out and then moved to Australia. When I went back to England, that house was home and I always knew where to hang my coat. So now... This has come with us to Australia. It will get mounted in this house and I'll know where to hang my coat. And hopefully, maybe I'll be able to find a copy of that sticker again or make one just to, just to complete it. <laughs> All right, so good fun, nostalgic trip, um, including going to the campsite my parents used to take me at. That will be a separate video. Loved it absolutely loved it thank you for watching this was a terrible video but at least i'm a little bit more awake now bye